Hey there, I'm Kathleen Jasper, and today I'm going through three geometry problems from our Praxis Core math section of our Praxis Core study guide. You can get the study guide digitally on our website or on Amazon in physical form. Links are in the description below. Lots of people struggle with geometry. I'm going to do three different problems today. Let's get to it. So this is from practice test one, I believe this is number 45. And people tend to get a little bit freaked out when they see a problem like this. But let's not get ourselves into a tizzy here. Let's just take a look at what's going on. So it's asking, what is the value of X? You can see my answer choices here are all in multiples of five. I say that because sometimes you can eliminate certain answer choices, but in this case, I make it hard on you. You can see that I have a 15 up here and I have a 145 here, which leads me to believe that the end result is probably gonna be multiples of five, not always, but let's say in the answer choices, there was like a 17 or a 13 or something like that. I could probably eliminate it. However, in this case, we don't have that luxury because I made it hard on you in the study guide. So we're going to have to figure this out by doing the actual math. All right. So we have a couple things going on here. We've got straight lines. We have this 90 degree box here. We have X plus 15 here, and then we have an angle measure. So when you get a question like this, I want you to think about all the clues that they're giving you here in this particular problem. All right. Now we know that with straight lines, we can use supplementary angles. So supplementary angles, let's just take a look at the straight line here, okay? Supplementary angles added up equal 180 degrees because a straight line equals 180 degrees. So if I were to take 180 and subtract 145, I could find the answer to that little angle right there because I need it in order to be able to figure out what X is in this situation. So 180 minus 145 is 35. So this angle here, and let me just erase real quick because it's going to get messy. That angle there is going to be 35 degrees. Hopefully you can read that. Okay. Now I have a triangle. This right here now makes a triangle. So not only do I need to understand supplementary angles equal 180 and a straight line equals 180. Now I can use what I know about triangles to figure out this angle here. And I'll just call it Y for now, because I already use X in that uh, parentheses up there. So let's try to figure out what Y is. Well, guess what? Triangles also equal 180 degrees. All right. So if I know this box means that I have a 90 degree angles. Now, if you do not see the box, it is not 90 degrees. So be careful. Just because an angle looks like it's 90 degrees on the test, they will indicate it with that little box. So be careful. So right now I have 90 degrees plus 35 degrees plus Y. I don't know what that is. Equals 180. So 90 plus 35 plus this Y here, we'll just call it Y, equals 180. So now all I need to do is take 90 plus 35, and I get 125 plus Y equals 180. So not only are we doing geometry here, we're also doing algebra because we're going to solve for Y. How do I do that? Well, I isolate this Y here by subtracting 125 because that's a positive 125. And whatever I do to one side, I have to do to another. So I subtract 125. And in this case, 10 minus 5 is 5. And 7 minus 2 is 5. In this case, this angle here, and let me erase because now we know what it is. That angle there is now 55 degrees. Because 55 plus 35 plus 90. And let me just check my math. I got my calculator here. 90 plus 55 plus 35 equals 180. All right. So now I need to use my knowledge of vertical angles. So when you have, and let me just draw it here, these two angles are equal. And these two angles are equal. When they cross at that point, they're called vertical angles. So right here, 
and right here are vertical angles and they are equal to each other. So in this case, 55 equals X plus 15. So let me just erase a little bit more here so we can get some room. All right, so we have 55 equals its vertical angle, which is X plus 15. Now let's solve for X again using algebra. Subtract 15 because that's a positive 15, so we do the opposite. Subtract 15, five minus five is zero, five minus one is 40, 40 equals X. The answer is C. So notice we did a few things here. We figured out our supplementary angle first, which was this 35 degrees because 145 plus 35 equals 180. We know that this line is a straight line here and supplementary angles together equal 180. Then I took a look at this triangle here and was able to find this particular angle here because I knew the box indicated 90. I had the 35 degrees from my previous discovery, 145 plus 35 equals 180. And now I know if I add 35 plus 90 plus 55, I'm gonna get that 180, which triangles all equal, all of the angles inside of a triangle equal 180. And then I have to use my knowledge of vertical angles like we did here. And we know that 55 in this case is going to equal X plus 15. We use algebra over here and we got our correct answer with X equals 40. So lots of skills going on in this, but just slow down and remember complementary, supplementary rules of triangles, things like that. We cover them all in the book. We have charts that put them in a nice um, visual for you so you can check those out. And that is essential in solving a problem like this. All right, now let's go to the next question here. All right, so this is a word problem. Um, and a lot of people have trouble with word problems and it is a geometry problem. So I always like to start with my answer choices. Can't do much here. They're just numbers. So let's have a look at the question. A rectangular shipping box. All right. As soon as I hear shipping box, I'm going to think volume because I'm going to be putting stuff into the box, right? Has a length of 12 inches. So I've got a length of 12 and a width of eight inches. Okay. Both of them are in inches. That's good news. I don't have to convert anything. If the volume of the box is 1056 cubic inches, what is the height of the box? All right. And so you might be like, oh my God, how do I do this? This is very simple. We're talking about volume here. Volume equals length times width times height. That's why they call it cubic inches because it's gonna look like this because you have three measures here, length, width, and height because it's a three-dimensional figure. Now, all we need to do is use this formula in order to solve the problem. Well, I have the volume, right? I have this V here, oops, this V here, it's 1,056, see, 1,000, the volume of the box is 1,056. So I just hit equals, I'm using the formula and I have the length, the length is 12. So 12, I'm just gonna put these in parentheses here to keep them organized. And I have the width, which is here, eight inches, eight, but I do not have the height. The height is unknown, but I have everything else so I can figure it out. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 12 times 8 and I get 96. Don't forget this H here. That is multiplied by everything. So this becomes 96H equals 1056. And then you can use your calculator. Remember, it will be an on-screen simple calculator. Be careful with it. 1056. And we're going to divide both sides by 96 to solve for H, right? Because the 96 is attached to the height. We need the height to be isolated on its own. If we're multiplying 96 by H, we're gonna divide and that cancels leaving us with just the H. What I do to one side, I need to do to the other. And that becomes 11. H equals 11, answer A, all right? Now let's take a look at the last one here. 
And a lot of people get freaked out about this because we're talking about circumference. I can see uh, diameter circumference and I'm like, oh my God, it's a circle. It's a circle. It's okay. One of the things we want to see here is I always want to look at my answer choices because it is going to give me a hint. Notice that the answers are not in pi, meaning these numbers aren't like 21.98 pi. So in this case, we're probably going to have to figure out the pi by multiplying by 3.14. It'll be clear in a second. All right. So I have a mirror has a diameter of 14 inches. What is the circumference of the mirror to the nearest hundredth of an inch? All right. They do that hundredth of an inch because we're going to be using 3.14 for pi. And notice that the four is at the hundredth. And it means basically that you can just multiply by 3.14 and not the entire number of pi, which goes on into infinity for all of my math nerds. So let's take a look. First, I'm going to draw the circle. I'm going to do my best. That is not a very good circle, but it'll have to do. Now, the diameter is the line that runs directly through the center of the circle, right? So here's the center, runs directly through the center. And the diameter is 14 inches. Now, be careful that you understand the difference between radius and diameter. Diameter is the entire line that goes through. Radius is from the center of the circle out. So that's the radius there. Let's use the formula for circumference. So circumference equals 2 pi r. Now, I know this because I teach math all the time. You may be like, how did you find that? You will get a formula sheet on the exam. It is available. It's usually an on-screen formula. It's like a button you click and the formula sheet comes up. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you what it looks like based on the study companion. It's a very simple formula sheet, but you will be given this formula. So I can look now, the circumference is what they're asking for. Circumference equals two pi r. All right. Now, notice this pi here. That means I have to add in this 3.14 because my answer choices are not in pi. So I have to actually multiply it by the 3.14. So in this case, 14 inches is the diameter. Well, the diameter is twice the amount of the radius, right? Because the diameter is the full length and the radius is half of that. So what's half of 14? That's going to be seven inches, which is important for our formula here. So we have circumference equals two, and this is pi, so I'm going to go ahead and do it, 3.14 times r. Well, r we know is seven inches. We can just put them all in parentheses here to keep them organized, right? So now we have multiplication on the right-hand side. You can multiply these any way you want, because remember, multiplication and addition can be done in different uh, order. It doesn't matter. So let's just multiply the two by 3.14. And we get 6.28 and then multiply it again by seven. And we get C equals 43.96. All right. Now let's say we just want to kind of do this quickly and we don't want to be bogged down with the calculator. Okay, fine. Let's take two times seven, that's 14 times 3.14. Let's say I wanna just quickly look at my answer choices and see if I can eliminate. Well, let's just multiply three. Let's forget about the 0.14 here. Let's multiply three by 14. And what do I approximately get here? I get approximately 42, right? Well, that eliminates A, that eliminates C, D is way too big and E is way, way too big, which leaves me with 43.96 inches. And if I were to multiply that 14 times 3.14, which is pi, I do get the, uh, the more approximate number 43.96, all right? Now let's have a look at the formula sheet really quickly so you can see what you get when you are in the test. It's not very extensive, so you're going to want to really review these formulas as well so you kind of have them in your head. But if you're stuck on test day and you're like, oh my God, I forget the formula for circumference or I forget the formula for area or whatever, you can find it in the formula sheet. Just go to the digital study guide is all linked up. So let's go into um, algebra. 
and geometry. These are the practice problems. But you can see here that we have all of the formulas and the concepts here. Let's go to angle measures. Here's what we talked about, vertical angles, supplementary angles, complementary angles. So we provide you with all that information. And that's why when people get the study guide, let me stop sharing here. People get the study guide and they're like, oh, I just want practice test questions. And it's like, that's not going to do it, especially if you are lacking in the skills. Doing practice tests over and over again is okay. But if you are struggling with the math, you really have to understand those concepts. So going through everything in the study guide and it's extensive. So you're going to need to, you know, do 20 minutes a night, 30 minutes a night for a few weeks in order to get that information. Now, if you're a math whiz and you were good at it in high school and it's all good, you might just need a review. If you're someone who struggled with math for a long time, I have tons of videos on this YouTube channel, so you can definitely check those out. And we also have an online course for the Praxis Core Math that is very extensive. It has hours and hours of videos that goes through the book. And then we also have videos for every single practice test question in the study guide. So you can just follow along and work through them, or you can just work through them, uh, work through the ones that you had problems with. And let me show you really quick where to go. And you can find everything we offer here on our website. I just published this new book, Teach. You've probably been hearing me talk about it constantly. Um, this is a survival guide for new educators. This is about the classroom and not necessarily um, math specific, but there's tons of information here. But if you go to study guides, you can see you can get the Praxis Core here. And again, I'll link it up in the description below. It's also available on Amazon. You just click this button. It'll take you right there to purchase that. And then, of course, if you are struggling, we have the Praxis Core online course. You can get all of them or you can get the math only. You can you can get them by subtest here. And I have a ton of information in these drop downs for you. Questions that people ask a lot. So I put them in a frequently asked question kind of drop down box here. And so it answers all those questions. And again, this is very extensive if you're working on that Praxis Core math. So we got the free stuff on YouTube. We have the Praxis Core webinars. I'll link that up as well. We have the paid stuff, the study guides, and the online course. I'm also on TikTok. I'm going to be doing one minute math on TikTok. I just did a video on TikTok for the Praxis teaching reading and how to work backwards using those particular test questions. And so I'm just going to keep posting as many videos as I can to help you guys pass your certification exams. I'm so glad you're here. Please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel, following me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, you know the drill. I am everywhere and there's content everywhere. And also subscribing to our newsletter. And I'll put the link in the description below for that. We're really amping up our newsletter. I want to provide the best information for you so that not only are you passing your certification, exams, but you're also getting those questions answered as a new teacher. That's really important to me as well. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Have an awesome day. Thanks.